Hey everybody, we're here this morning with Curtis Brawley in his cool new house. I love it. Thank I'm, you. I have, hope you have my bedroom ready because I'm about ready to move <laughs> in. This is awesome. He really has a nice house, guys. On the lake, it's beautiful. You Thank did you. good. You did Finally good. Finally got settled in. I've uh, been living here now for couple of months. Yeah. And I think it takes about a year to finally get settled into a place when you move. Well, you're doing a good so, job. It, this not is looking nice. forward to moving anytime soon. No, I don't blame you. Sure. I don't blame you. Well, I know you've got a lot going on. You always have a lot going on. I try and stay busy. Yeah, it's that's good. You've got a new video you're working on. You've just put out a new album recently, which is always in my car, and I love it. Well, I and that. you have grown so much as an artist just since I've known you Thank and I think that you know you're starting to get a lot more attention on radio and out on tour you were out on tour recently with Tanya Tucker and you've yeah. had some pretty fun shows that you've gotten to do so let's just chat let's just talk about some All of right. them and you know tell me some of the highlights of what's going on and talk about the video yeah so I mean you said we had a brand new album that came out and it's called You Matter and the very first single that we brought off of that album is called Love You Down. Mm -hmm. We went to country radio with that and have had really good luck. Got some good feedback. So we went out and we shot a music video for it. And we've had the music video sitting in our pockets for a couple of months now. So it's been eating away at me to finally get this thing out. And uh, here in the next couple of weeks-ish, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to... It's going to premiere and we're going to get it out there finally. It's a cool scripted music video, so it'll be a nice storytelling kind of uh, music video. That, that's awesome. Talk about the process of making a video because a lot of people don't know what it takes. And I know off camera we were kind of discussing some of this stuff. What's your favorite part about making a video? Uh, well, it used to, I would say, it was the part of me being in front of the camera and performing to the camera for the music video. That used to be the funnest. But this time when we were making the video, we got to actually cast actors. And I got to be there and watch from the director's side of the chair, watching the monitor, and watch all the different takes going on, and watching him direct them on how he wanted things to come out. And so I really enjoyed that, being on the opposite side from a creative standpoint, kind of the outside looking mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. and talking to the director and saying, uh, that's not really the feel I'm going for for this scene and how can we adjust that and fix that. So that was pretty cool to be to be on that side of it instead of just being in front of the camera. Absolutely, absolutely. And you and I both know, because we've been on video sets and, and shoots before, nothing is shot in sequence. So what no. people see at the end result is not what happens when it's being recorded. So, so true. Uh, you know, in fact, our opening scene in this music video was the very last shot that we did mm -hmm. of the whole thing. Yep. So now let's flip the tables and what's the one thing that you least enjoy about making a music video? Um, man, I don't know. I don't know that there's anything that I don't like about it because every bit of it is so much fun. I think the hardest part in making this video is we shot a scene of me on a cliff singing in deep west Texas in the Big Bend National Park area. And it was about 110 degrees that day and I was, you know, of course, full wardrobe, jacket and everything and uh, it was extremely, extremely hot. Mm -hmm. But you just had to get up and act like you were yep. having a time An Another behind the scenes <laughs> thing that people don't realize yep. that goes along with photo shoots and videos is it may look great, but if that temperature or the weather or the how many times you've done a retake, all of yep. that is not seen or felt in the end of the video. So. Yeah, we actually had to stall the taping of that scene for about an hour because a big thunderstorm came through. So then the thunderstorm passed and the heat wave came back in but now it was like a hundred percent humidity exactly it just had to rain. exactly and i had to climb up this big cliff to get the top my makeup artist had to climb with me because <laughs> i was sweating bullets the whole time so between it's every take gone. she was trying to fix me and make me look beautiful absolutely oh yeah see these are the stories i like to hear <laughs> this is the stuff that you don't get when you know when you just sit and watch the video so um well that'll be fun to look forward to that yeah, we actually shot, we had a production crew come out and shoot all the behind the scenes 
So we're actually going to have a segment that people are going to get to see at some point to see how it was all made. Good, good. It's always fun. Those are my favorites when I can watch those clips to see yeah. how things went into everything. The bloopers so. too. Yeah, those are always fun to see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the best part. That's <laughs> definitely the best part. We'll talk about where you're at on tour. Um, I know you're off the road probably for a good portion of the next few months. Things kind of yeah. slow down in the music world as far as touring. Um, but you have stuff planned for over the holidays and you know what, what yeah now it's just about ham and turkey hey <laughs> <laughs> for the next couple of months uh, it's nice to be off the road I get a little uh, stir crazy because I'm used to being so mm -hmm. busy we mm -hmm. were on the road this summer and we toured as you mentioned with Tanya Tucker and that was so so much fun I tell everybody if you uh want to have a good time to spend a few hours with Tanya Tucker. She knows how to uh, crank things up a notch. But we were doing that on top of shooting a music video, on top of radio touring, mm -hmm. going out and doing media touring, promoting the album, all that was happening simultaneously. So there wasn't really a day that we had nothing going on. So when you come now off the road and the season, the music business season is kind of winding mm -hmm. down, there's not going to a lot happen over the next couple of months. You kind of sit around your house twiddling your thumbs going, I feel like I should be doing I something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting anything accomplished. <laughs> uh, I know there's one room that you could be cleaning out, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm telling his dirty laundry. But no, that's the truth. It really yeah. is. I'm the same way. I hate it when I'm so overwhelmed I can't feel like I'm caught up. But once I am, then all of a sudden you're looking around going, okay, I'm not used to this, what do we do next? Yeah. And But that's when your creativeness starts and you start writing and thinking of how you want to do the next tour and what video and so forth. Yeah, when you get bored, that's when you really start thinking about mm -hmm. song ideas and where you want to, how you want to market the next single that you're going to have. So yeah, your creative juices keep flowing and I have to remind myself, just relax too, you know, this is the time you get to catch up on sleep. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, we'll change gears here a little bit. I'm going to read a question off of your Facebook page um, right. because we invited people to ask some questions. So Andrea wants to know, what made you decide to take the leap into following your dreams and what decides the direction of your music? Well, I mean, the deciding factor to take the leap, and I don't know when she says take the leap, Andrea, if you're saying making the move to Nashville or... Um, just deciding to pursue music, but so I'll kind of touch on both of them real quick. It was pretty an, a natural instinct in me to pursue my music career because I've had that burning itch and desire to do music since I was little bitty. Uh, I remember going to my grandmother's house when I was five and six years old, and I had to put on a big show. I mean, I would schedule a time and everybody had to come sit in the room and I'd come out and put on the big the big show for, for the whole family. So it's always kind of been in my blood to entertain everyone and I've known that that's kind of what I was put on this earth to do is get on stage and entertain people because I love it so much. The uh, deciding factor to make that full-time commitment to music and move to Nashville, Nashville was just that it had finally gotten so busy. I was living in Texas and I was commuting back and forth to Nashville every two weeks and I did that for a year and a half. So I'd come to Nashville and spend two weeks and I'd go back to Houston and spend two weeks and it literally, until probably December showed up, that was the only month that I was not traveling back and forth to Nashville. And Interstate 40, which is kind of the main road in and out of Nashville heading back west to Texas, I said that if I never have to see that freeway again, <laughs> it would be too soon because we were driving the majority of that time back and forth. And I always joke with people, I was only home long enough to do my laundry and pack it back up and get back to Nashville. So I knew then that things were kind of, that snowball effect was happening. I was starting to get so busy that I was having to be in Nashville so often. And there were those opportunities would come up where I was back in Texas for a couple weeks and something came up in Nashville that I didn't get to be a part of because I was gone. So I knew that if I really wanted to keep the snowball effect happening that I needed to make that transition and live here full time. So I didn't miss out on those opportunities. I think you made a right choice because there is a lot of things that, like you said, happen here. And we don't always get a lot of advance notice That's on true. them. 
so, very last minute. Or, yes. I mean, uh, like someone like yourself could have an interview scheduled that someone bells out on and you need someone else to come sit in that place and mm -hmm. you're just here and able mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, let's ask another one. Palma, and I apologize if I mis misspoke that, wants to know, how much sleep do you normally get on the road? <laughs> that much. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not sleep well on tour buses. Excuse me. I, uh, I wish that I did. I know there's some people in my band that if the bus is moving, they're sleeping. And when they're home, they can't sleep because they're so used to sleeping on tour buses. Hopefully, I will uh, get that way or at least kind of meet in the middle. But when the bus is moving, I don't know if it's the fact that someone else is driving and I'm not in control of that bus. <laughs> not knowing where we're heading, if we're going to run off the road, I just don't sleep well. So um, I drink a lot of coffee, and when I finally do get to come home, I crash for about three days. And then you miss out on everything going on in Nashville. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but I get fueled up and ready to go again. Uh, well, this one kind of fits into the same Texas one, so we'll go ahead and ask this one. Joy wants to know, do you ever want to come back to Texas again? Yeah, I mean, Texas is definitely home to me. I was raised there. My whole family is there. So being away from them is really difficult. My uh, niece and nephew are both still young, uh, 8 and 13. So being away and missing the... My niece just became a cheerleader for the first time, so now she's doing all this cheerleading for the football games. And normally, when I lived there, I wouldn't have missed any of that. I would always have been there for that. So it's hard to miss those things, and I definitely want to get back to Texas at some point. Whether it's I have a secondary uh, place that I can go and stay there when I want, or uh, live there full time. You never know. I mean, with technology these days, you can pretty much live anywhere and, and get most of your work done. So we'll see. Well, that fit perfectly into the next question, and I need to go back to your Facebook page because I was taking a picture while you guys weren't looking. <laughs> um, the question was, let's see, let me go back to it. I apologize. Hang on. The question was if you ever wanted to do anything else outside of singing, and now I can't get back into it. But anyway, that was the question, so whoever asked it, thank you for asking it. But we kind of talked about that earlier today before we started our interview that you want to branch out and maybe do other things yeah. and that there's a lot more to this business than just jumping on a stage or behind a microphone. Yeah, for sure. So maybe elaborate on that a little bit. Definitely my number one goal is to be a recording artist. On top of that, or parallel with that, I would like to host television shows and, and uh, interview other people that are in the industry and kind of get an insight to all the... Uh, all the bells and whistles that go along with making this this business operate. So I really enjoy that that part of it too. If for some reason I were not an artist down the road, I would always stay in the music business in some form or fashion, whether that's managing another artist or being a tour manager, uh, something of that nature, or in, in publicity, something like that. But um, before I got into music, I was a police officer for almost five years. And that is definitely, was, I tell people all the time, that was my second most favorite job. If, if I didn't have this burning desire to be in music, I'd probably still be a police officer. I forgot about that, and I, I knew it too, I mean, because we had discussed that when we first met. Right. And I'm going to totally jump off base with this one, <laughs> but with everything that's going on right now with the police officers and all the riots and stuff, how does that make you feel? knowing that you've been in that industry and your heart still is, is there, what thoughts come to your mind when you see all this stuff going on? Uh, it's very sad. I think from both sides of it, I'm not going to say that there are not corrupt police officers in the industry. I know that there are. I've worked with some myself when I was a police officer. There's there's always the good and bad to any mm -hmm. industry. I'm sure it is. Yes. And I think it's very unfortunate that the bad ones give the good ones a bad name. And that they always get lumped in to just mm -hmm. police officers. Exactly. You don't ever... I mean, it's always police officers did this, cops did that. 
So they kind of all get lumped into one category. So I think that's very unfortunate. Uh, I think what I would love to see is more education on both sides, to the police officers and the civilians, to mm -hmm. know what really goes on in a police officer's head when they're doing their job. So you really know how to respond to an officer when he is talking to you. I mean, there's just so many bad things that they deal with on a daily basis mm -hmm. that um, I think if most civilians understood where they were coming from, we would have a better jump in the right direction of avoiding some of the problems that we've had with police officers. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. I think police officers need to have a better understanding of how the civilians feel so they know how to deal with it. Because we don't know how each person is feeling, it's just like a relationship. It is. If you don't understand what that person's feeling, then you cannot fix it and make it better. Yep. So, I mean, I, I just wish with, with police, the election that just came to an end, I think it comes down to people just have to learn to be kind to one another. Amen. And if we can just be kind to one another and respect one another, I think a lot of things will fix themselves. Amen. Yes. The change that people want to see lies within themselves. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be that change that yep. you want to see. Yep. Can't rely Lead on by else. example. Lead so. by example. I'm going to tie one other question into that same thing. Um, because social media is such a big part of our lives right now, and just probably in the last year or so, the dash cams and the body cams have come into play more often. Do you think that that's a good thing or a bad thing, or what benefits do you think that has, especially related to the police officers, but in general? I mean, because everybody's videotaping everything now. Mm -hmm. Some stuff is edited, we only see what people want us to see. Right. Other things, we're seeing things, but it's from one view or a different angle. Do you think it's a benefit, or do you think that it's something that is not? So, I mean, this can relate to a lot of things. I know that's a very general question, yeah. but, you know, it goes even as far as, you know, your end of stuff is being an artist, people that video stuff, is it helping you, or is it something that maybe we wish we didn't have? I think the cameras that really give you a good video aspect and audio of what's happening are a good thing. I think the dash cams and the body cams that the officers are wearing are a great thing and really important. For the good officers, it helps to protect them. For the bad officers, I think it encourages them to be better because they know that someone's watching. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. I think the videos from people's phones that are taken from across the road where you're not really getting a grasp of what all is happening and what all is being said uh, can have a negative effect because you've got to see and I think it's Dr. Phil always says it's uh, something about a pancake there's always two sides to yeah it. And yeah I think it's it's bad when you only get to see one side of it and people mm -hmm. will run with that one side and turn it into something that it may or may not be yeah Yep. And it's, I think it's important that people understand that. And, you know, that goes with everything, any media, any social media, anything that's out there is you have to be able to kind of sit back and look at it for what it is and not read too much into it and figure out where the source was coming from and, you know, kind of go from there. So let's get back to happy stuff. <laughs> let's talk about the new album. Okay. And you said you got it. We've, we've got one song on the radio now. You've got another one coming out soon, correct? Yeah, after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. So, put me inside your mind. Take our our people sure watching. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> where, what, what does, you, where do you go with when you know that you have a song about to be released? I mean, I know that you're busy with all the production end of it and all the you know promotion end of it, but I want to know where you, where your heart is when you know a song's going to go out there. What are your thoughts and your feelings and you know? How scary is it for you, or how exciting is it for you? Talk about that a little bit. It's usually very exciting, um, and depending on the song, it can be scary too. If it's a song that you had a hand in writing that may be very personal to you, or really tells your story, even if you didn't write, 
are still very important to me. So when they go out, you hope that they share the message that you wanted the song to share when you were being creative mm -hmm. and deciding to record it and put it on your album. But for the most part, it's very exciting because you've worked on it for months, if not over a year, before that person finally gets to hear it. Yeah. We started writing and working on this album in October of last year. So that was 13 months ago. And there's still songs on there that people have not heard, and we've been working on them for over a year. Exactly. <laughs> so it's fun to uh, to finally get it out and let people hear what you you've done, and hope that they embrace it the way you did. Because the songs that usually make it to an artist's album, they have really embraced those songs because it has come down to. I mean, we listened to about 500 songs easily. I'm sure. Um, in preparation for this album. So to bring it down to 10 is a difficult task and mm -hmm. you have to live with those songs for the rest of your career. Exactly. So you want to make sure that you're choosing the very best that you can and you got to sing them for a long time. Yeah. Especially if they're going to be a single. Exactly. Yeah. Do you ever get to the point where you're just like, oh my god, I don't want to put this in the set tonight or do you still get that excitement of, no. I love every minute of yeah, this? Yeah, I do. I, there's something about, I could be having the worst day, not feeling so great, or you know, whatever the case may be, and man, when the, when the lights come on, it's, it seems like all of that just mm -hmm. washes away and fades yeah. away. Yeah. There were times on the road where it got so overwhelming this summer that I would question, what am I doing? Is this worth it? Mm -hmm. And that would be before I got on stage. And as soon as I walked off stage, it was the answer was, this is why I do it. Because mm -hmm. that 45 minutes to an hour and a half, whatever your set length was, made up for all the horse crap that you dealt with. <laughs> That's a nice term. <laughs> it's the nicest one I could come up with uh, for the last 24 hours prior to the show. <clears throat> So I know that we had kind of talked about this a little bit off, off camera again, but when you come off of that stage, what's your routine? Everybody always asks, what's your pre-show game? You know, what do you do beforehand? Do you pray? Do you chant? Do you whatever? What do you do when you come off stage? What's, what's your routine? I usually eat. That is the very first thing that I do because I won't eat before a show within several hours because I'm always afraid that it's not going to sit well and it's going to affect my singing, so I just will not eat before a show. So usually the band has all eaten right before a show, so they're all good. And when I come off, I'm starving. And uh, that's the first thing I'll do. And then it's right to the shower because I sweat my butt off up there. Get cleaned up. And most of the band, they're all ready to kind of have a party and celebrate mm -hmm. another good show. And honestly, I'm like... The one that's ready to go to bed and get as much sleep as I can because I know i got to get up tomorrow and do it all over again. I've got to get up in the morning and do morning show interviews and those kind of things. Whereas the band gets to sleep in throughout the day and not right. have to be up till right. sound check that right. after the next afternoon. So they can stay up and have a good time and I've got to get sleep because I just don't function well with with very little sleep. Yep, exactly. Now are you doing meet and greets after your shows as well? Yes, that's... Um, as soon as the show's over, usually, um, like when we were touring with Tanya, I would come off, I'd get cleaned up while she was playing, and during her last song, I would go get ready, go get in our meet and greet spot, and we would do meet and greets until they kicked us out. Mm -hmm. and there were some venues that we went with Tanya where they shut all the lights out on us, and we were still sitting there <laughs> taking pictures right. and signing. Trying things. to sign and meet everybody you can. So I know this is a question that a lot of people ask, and, and, and it might be one of those old questions, but what's one of the most favorite memories you have from a meet and greet? Hmm. I think I've had a, a couple of times where people will come up to me and bring a CD. Like, in fact, there was this one lady who brought a CD from when I was right out of high school. Something that most people have never had their hands on because it was not distributed in a formal fashion wow. like we distribute music now. So to see somebody who has followed me in my career before it was really even a career uh, come to you and 
have a, an old CD for you and want you to sign it, that's pretty cool because you know that they've been with you from the get-go. Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, it's inspiring to know that there's people out there that believe in you as much as you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end on a question that ties into exactly what you just said, that if you could give advice to someone that is looking to get into the career, what's something that you would honestly tell them to start with or, you know, what piece of advice would you give them? Well, two things. Go into it knowing that it's a lot, a lot of work. Um, I mentioned to you off camera earlier that a friend of mine messaged me one day wanting to hang out and I said, oh, I've got a meeting to go to. And she said, don't you just show up and sing. And that's really only 5% of the business. There's Because it is a business, there's so other so many other moving parts going on that you're involved with so be ready to work really hard and I think the biggest advice that was given to me from someone who's very successful in this industry and that was Dolly you just have to outlast everyone else you cannot stop if this is what you feel like you should be doing you just have to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it so many other artists out there run out of fuel or run out of steam before they finally mm -hmm. make it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you just have to outlast everyone else because there's a lot of competition. Absolutely. Well, I know you have it in you. I, I, I can see it. <laughs> so you're going to be around for a long time. I so, hope so. Uh, always a great time chatting with you. you I too. love you, my friend. And I hope everybody enjoyed the interview. We'll post a full interview on our website. Any last things that you want to say before we say goodbye? Anything that you've got? Well, let us let me plug uh, the music because that's, that's a big deal. If you will please go to iTunes or Google Play, wherever you grab your music from, and download the songs from the new album, You Matter. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, we've, we've kind of, we just got our initial report showing what the sales were for the, for the first month of the release. And, uh, I was overwhelmed by how good they were, so I would love to kind of keep that momentum going. I really appreciate all that support. And artists need you to go buy their music. That's how we continue to do this. So if you like what you hear and you want to continue to see an artist, go buy their music and support them. Go to my website, curtisbrawley.com, and you can find links to all of those things. iTunes, uh, Google Play, as well as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that fun stuff. They're all on there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.